hypocrite! Nah, I'm just kidding. But Jesus isn't. <laughs> Hello world, my name is David Dorn, and this is Preposterous, which is not your typical Bible study. So are you what Jesus defines as a hypocrite? You might be surprised. I have to refer back to these verses we're talking about today regularly to do what the old saying says. You better check yourself before you wreck yourself. Hey, I told you, this isn't your typical Bible study. But check out what Jesus says here in Matthew 15, 7 through 11. Hypocrites. Isaiah really knew what he was talking about when he prophesied about you. This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far away from me. Their worship of me is empty since they teach instructions that are human rules. Jesus called the crowd near and said to them, listen and understand. It's not what goes into the mouth that contaminates a person in God's sight. It's what comes out of the mouth that contaminates the person. Jesus defines hypocrites here as those who praise God with their lips, but their hearts are nowhere near Him. How does that set with you? I find myself sometimes slipping into this definition. Don't you? But what are we doing about it? In a recent video we did for our secondary series, Preposterous 2.0, on this channel, I said this, the church is full of hypocrites and racists. But that's the point. The church is not made up of perfect people, but people being made perfect. Now, while this may be true, it doesn't give us the license to stay that way. Now, let's make the distinction between hypocrisy and hypocrites. First, hypocrisy is this ebb and flow from times of being hypocritical to being faithful. I, like many other solid Christians, fight the temptation to slip into hypocrisy. It's hypocritical to make one person's sin so much worse than our own. It's hypocritical to not do what you think others should do. While wrong, these are individual acts as opposed to a lifestyle of being a hypocrite. A hypocrite is someone who praises God on Sunday and Monday through Saturday they act far from holy. Will you find these people in church? Absolutely. God still loves these people, although Jesus often is most frustrated with them. And I say being a hypocrite is a lifestyle because it involves duality. There are two ideas at work in these people. Follow God and follow everything else. While most of us have this struggle, hypocrites don't because they give in and they see nothing wrong with their actions. And a hypocrite sometimes is the most pious and outspokenly holy person around. And I say sometimes because I don't want you to keep a watchful eye out on that godly yet outspoken little old lady that sits in your church. Because every church has one. But this last kind, the one who envisions themselves as holy, they're the most dangerous. Jesus says these people are the blind leading the blind. They set themselves up as people to be followed, but deep down they're hollow inside. Now a good leader introspects often checking for signs of hypocrisy in his or her own life. Now, I love Peter, the disciple. In our last episode, he alone left the relative safety of the boat to walk out to Jesus on the water. And in Matthew 15, as Jesus is talking about hypocrites and what goes into your mouth and comes out of your mouth and blind people leading other blind people, Peter speaks up saying, Oh Lord, please explain this riddle to us. Basically, he's using very kind words to say, Jesus, what the heck are you talking about? And Jesus said, don't you understand yet? Don't you know that everything that goes into the mouth enters the stomach and then goes out into the sewer? But what goes out of the mouth comes from the heart. And that's what contaminates a person in God's sight. Out of, out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murders, adultery, sexual sins, thefts, false testimonies, and insults. These contaminate a person in God's sight, but eating without washing hands doesn't contaminate in God's sight. You see, all of this conversation got started when the religious leaders complained that the disciples didn't wash their hands before they ate. I mean, really? Are these guys back in kindergarten? I'm going to tell Jesus on you. Jesus was like, hold on here. You're complaining about washed hands when you 
are filthy inside. Hypocrites! It's not what goes into a person's mouth that contaminates them, but what comes out. And by that, he means what a person does. And what a person does comes straight from what they think and meditate on. Sin originates with what you think and meditate on. Jesus said that back in Matthew 5. So now ask yourself if hypocrisy originates in your heart, your desires, and what you meditate on. Are you a hypocrite? Or are you just guilty of some hypocrisy? Or are you free and clear of this whole mess? That's the question I'm asking because I'm asking it of myself. The good thing though is when we recognize the sin we commit, we can ask Jesus to forgive and change us. And I'm a personal fan of praying this prayer every day throughout the day. And it goes like this. Lord Jesus, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed Preposterous, make sure you like this video and share it on Facebook with your friends. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to us here on YouTube and you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. As always, if you have any questions for me, you can tweet me at I am Preposterous. And if you're a small group leader and would like to use Preposterous for your small group, you can sign up on our website at preposterousproject.com. God bless. Like many other Christians. <clears throat> did I cough? Yes, you did.